There is a popular, but very doubtful story told in New Orleans that in February of 1928, Al Capone took a train to that city and was greeted at the station by the local mafioso, Silver Dollar Sam Carolla. In this story, Capone himself went to New Orleans to tell the local mafia to stop making booze shipments to their rival, Joe Aiello. Al Capone wasn't in New Orleans in 1928, however, his brother Ralph was in New Orleans in February of 1928. Things didn't go well. The local police arrested Capone and company three times in three days. One charge was for using a false name to register at the Roosevelt Hotel. Capone was probably there to attend the city's fabulous fairgrounds racetrack. Accompanying Capone were Ralph and Mike Raymond. The story is that Carolla, in the company of a uniformed police squad, arrived at the station, disarmed the Chicago gangsters and broke the bodyguard's fingers, and then tossed them back on a train to Chicago. Capone was in the city for a full three days and under constant police scrutiny when he was supposed to have been beaten and tossed out of town upon their very arrival. Silvestro Davide Carolla was born in Terracini, Sicily in 1896. Carolla's parents immigrated to the U.S. and settled in New Orleans in either 1903 or possibly 1904. By 1918, Carolla had picked up his street name, Silver Dollar Sam, and he was already active in the mafia. In about 1922, boss Corrado Giacona appointed Corolla to be street boss and general manager. The family was locked into a beer war in the late 1920s, which Carollo ended by murdering his chief rival, a man named William Bailey. In 1931, Corollo was charged with the shooting of an undercover narcotics agent during a narcotics sale. The agent lived and Corollo was sent to two years in prison. In about 1935 or 1936, Corolla successfully negotiated a deal with Frank Costello and Phil Castell to flood Louisiana with Costello Castellone slot machines. For his cut, Corolla offered political protection. In 1938, Corolla, now way up on the federal government's most wanted list due to shooting the federal narcotics agent, was arrested in 1938 on a narcotics charge and sent to Atlanta Federal Prison for two years. When he was released, a federal court ordered him deported to Italy. The start of World War II delayed his deportation. When the war ended, the deportation order was brought back to life. The long-serving liberal Louisiana Congressman James Morrison drew up a special bill that would have made Carollo a naturalized citizen, which in turn would cancel out the deportation order. How all that came about is odd. Morrison was, in his two decades in Congress, a progressive and otherwise honest politician. The bill almost passed until the powerful investigative reporter Drew Pearson told the nation about Morrison's bill, which was killed before it reached the floor. In April of 1947, Corallo was tossed on a plane by federal marshals and sent to Sicily. His underboss Carlos Marcello stepped up to the top spot in his place. In 1947, the deported Lucky Luciano, another drug dealer, was found to be living in Cuba and was sent packing back to Sicily as well. Luciano and Carollo organized drug routes into the U.S. via Mexico. In 1949, Carollo managed to sneak back into the United States, was discovered by a sharp-eyed news reporter, and was deported again in 1950. Two years later, in 1952, the Italian police arrested him on swindling and narcotic charges. By 1969, Carolla, still in Palermo, Italy, and was still considered a major international drug dealer by the Italian National Police. One story has it that his one-time underboss, Carlos Marcello, needed him back in New Orleans to settle intrafamily disputes and that Marcello arranged for the 79-year-old gangster to slip back into the U.S. Factually, what happened was that in the summer of that year, 1969, Carollo's daughter and son Anthony, who was an active member of the New Orleans Mafia, went to Italy, collected their father, and flew with him to Canada, allowing him to slip back into the county by early 1970. He almost immediately had a heart attack and checked into a hospital in New Orleans, where his whereabouts were discovered. He was indicted by a grand jury, but before it could go anywhere, he died in Ube of that year. His son Anthony, who could have taken his life almost anywhere if he wanted to go, decided to dedicate himself to crime. Anthony was one of the hoods rounded, illegally, by the New York City police during a lunch meeting at the La Stella restaurant in Queens, New York in 1966. He became boss of the dwindling New Orleans family after Carlos Marcello's brother, Joe, stepped down as boss. Anthony remained boss until his death in 2017.